Hey everyone, Brandon here, and today I'm going to be playing Heroes of Might and Magic 4. It says Winds of War, but I, um, have all of them installed, so it's like, okay. So, it's been a long time since I played this game at all, and you know what, I decided I wanted to play it, so why not? Um... I have been the loyal squire of Lord I am forgetting which one is despite Elwyn's reputation as a yes scamp. okay so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with this game th this one all uh, the lovers sorry um I forget what that means it's been a long time since I played this game okay so Here's the story. I felt drawn despite Elwyn's reputation as a scamp, I felt drawn to his bold spirit. Not even Elwyn knew his true potential. I saw it though. When we were lost in the forest with all sorts of bandits and creatures around us, he was probably more afraid than he had ever been in his life. Yet he seemed more concerned with my mood. He kept trying to make me laugh. I will always love him for that. Okay. So, yeah, this game is very interesting, it's... Anyone who's played Heroes of Mind and Magic will know the know this game very uh, kind of well. This is one of my favorites, if not my favorite, Heroes of Mind and Magic. So anyways, luckily that night I dressed in a brand new ensemble. Ensemble. My shirt and trousers were pink silk, accented with white lace. I wore a white brimmed hat, adorned with peacock feathers, and a gold and a belt of golden discs. My knee-high boots were made of snow rabbit fur. I had spent most of my money on the outfit, and I think I think fate made me wear it, because that was the first time I set eyes on Shara. <clears throat> Ever since that day she entered the Elven Court. Everyone claimed she was the most beautiful woman in all of our Arnor. Arnorn? Now, I had heard the title... I had heard that title thrown around many times before. And in the court, filled with countless beautiful women, I never understood what made one stand out from another. But Shara was different. Her waist-length hair glimmered <clears throat> like rays of golden light, poking from the treetops. Her large eyes, the color of clear winter sky, dominated her slender face, and they were capable of piercing your soul. I danced with her more for more than two hours that night, and soon I learned that Shara wasn't just beautiful. I've danced with lovely women in the past, but abandoned them when I found their personalities about as interesting as riding a riding log. Shara was different. She was quiet, but intelligent. And in the sense that she longed for something, but did not know, did not know what. Just as I have my entire life. That's when I ask her, what do you do? I mean, when you're not capturing the heart of every man in the room. Cher looked deeply into my eyes, as if seeing the first for the first time and smiled at me. That's when I fell in love. Oh god. <clears throat> There's a lot of text in this game because this was an older game, like the actual thing says like two thousand two copyright, so <laughs> Shara is the kind of woman that makes you do things you wouldn't normally do. She can make a lazy man athletic and a greedy man a philanthropist. She inspired me to draw on a few favors so I could be named one of the Druid Advisors for a diplomatic journey along the coast of Arnorn. Arnorn? Arnorn? I don't... I have no idea. 
I'm just gonna go with Arnorn. I didn't exactly enjoy traveling through the wilderness. And I like sea travel even less. But this was my chance to steal a few moments with Cheryl without the prying eyes of the Elven Court watching us. The only person I had to worry about was her father, Grauman. Grauman was the leader of this expedition. He was supposed to visit the port's towns to solidify their relationship with Arnorn, and hopefully bring them completely under the loose authority of this new Elven nation. I soon found out that Grauman had tried to block my appointment to this mission. Why? I didn't know. Luckily, he was unable to sway the vote. I have a feeling that Menasat, Menasat? my mentor and strongest supporter, had something to do with it. It was nice to have a member of the Elder Court as a good friend. And if I had known Grauman was would be so vigilant in keeping his daughter away from me, I might not have bothered. We were on the eighth day of travel when Shara and I finally managed to sneak up sneak up onto one of the masts to talk and stare at the stars. Above the crow's nest, we heard the soft snoring of the watchman. I'd slipped him a sleeping draught earlier so Shara and I could be alone. If you ask me, it was about time my druid training came in handy. I impressed Shara with my knowledge of the heavens, naming every star she pointed out. Let me show you my favorite one, I said. She rested her head against my arm to stare along its path as I pointed to the eastern horizon. But all I could think about was the beautiful smell wafting up from her hair. I closed my eyes, knowing that I would remember that scent forever. There, I said, just above the skyline. See the blue one next to the red star, almost touching? They blink in time together. Those were the lovers. And why do you show me th those stars, Elwyn? Shara said, toying with me. Before I could answer, through a shadow across the... A shadow passed across the lovers. I tensed as I followed the shadow down to a larger darkness floating across the sea. It was a ship, and it was approaching us too quickly to be a mistake. To be any mistake. Pirates attacked so quickly that the crew was still below deck when rogues swung across to on ropes to our ship. I don't remember exactly what... I don't remember much except the screaming and clanking of metal on metal. Though there was fire everywhere, smoke burning the eyes, and people everywhere were dying. It was horrible. All I could think about was a sheriff to safety, getting sure to safety. We made it to one of the dinghies, and thanks to the battle being fought on the two ships, I cut it free and escaped into the darkness unnoticed. We watched from a distance as both ships burned. Shara cried on my shoulder, for she did not know her father's fate. So yeah, th th this, this game is a lot of like thinking and stuff like that. So when you see a green, that means it's a safe move. A yellow means that you could be in the, uh, you could end up being attacked by a guy nearby. Oh, I'm the only one I have on my team right now. Okay, and turn. And it goes by days. Okay, what spells do I got? Summon wolves. Wolves attack! Summon wolves!
basically like I like the druids a lot because they have a lot of summoning stuff of course and <clears throat> back in this one you could actually have a team of only like heroes as well was the thing you didn't have to like um A lot of the games required you to actually take and have, um, you had your one hero and then you had units that you could take. Okay, well, I'm gonna take it. Oh, I got a dragon drop into his portrait, that's right. Yeah, so, I mean, this is what the game is basically played like, so it's like, if you had, I, I enjoy the game, I'm gonna play it for a little while. If you guys want to see me play more, let me know, and I will. Because I actually really enjoy this game. A lot. Me and my dad might even do, like, a, um, one-on-one, <clears throat> -on -one, me versus him, because we used to actually do that a lot. That was one of those things that me and him um, like to do was play this game. Of course, everyone has like their own factions that they like and stuff like that. I always enjoyed the nature one because there's so many things you can do. You guys also level up and stuff like that, which is cool. Um, oh, it gives me bonus movement speed. Very nice. So, yeah, like, early game, what you're doing is basically just, um, moving around. Where can I move? Why does it act like it can actually move? So your guys also level up as you play the game as well. So that's what I really like about the campaign or scenarios in this is that you actually get to like the level up and you'll get more out of, you can level up your main hero and get him more powerful. Of course they set a like limiter so you can't go too high. You hear a painful yowl coming from somewhere off the path. For a moment, you consider heading in the other direction. You've heard plenty of bards' tales, and people always die while investigating strange sounds, but you can't stand the moaning any longer. So you creep quietly from tree to tree. You must be close, but you can't see anything. Could it be some forest spirit? You've heard stories about them too. They're never pleasant. Then you nearly put your foot in it, in it. A pit, that is. You drop to your knee and stare down into the steep hole. At the bottom is a small wolf pup, clawing pitifully at the side of the trap as it howls for help. It seems to be favoring one of its hind legs, most likely injured during its fall. Oh, well done, little guy. You say as you search for a branch or a log, some way to get the pup out. Of course, you find nothing large enough to help. So you circle the pit a couple times, setting it closely. It's probably only a few inches shy of seven feet deep. Even a grown wolf couldn't climb out of that. But for once in your life, your tall, thin body is good for something. You take out your daggers and stab it, stab it firmly into the ground at the edge of the pit so you can use it as leverage when you climb back out. Then you jump in right next to the pup. The small pup growls, uh, barks and growls as you reach for it. It even snaps at your hand, ripping a bit of, uh, ripping off a bit of flesh. Ow, I'm just trying to help, you say. But you sense that the creature is more frightened than it's ever been in its life. There isn't going to be an easy way out of it an easy way to do this. So you quickly snatch up the wolf pup, lift it towards the top of the pit, winces and scratches nips at your hand, 
at your arms. Finally, the pup realizes where it is and leaps to the forest floor. You hear it scurry away. You're welcome, you say. Your head and forearm look like you, like you rub thorns against them, and your sleeves of your silk tunic are ruined. This was the thanks you got. It takes a little effort for you to lift yourself out of the pit, out of the pit trap. But as you reclaim your dagger, you realize you are not alone. As silent as a whisper, a pack of wolves surrounds you. Uh, I didn't dig this hole. Honest. You remain still afraid that the wrong move will get you killed. Even when a larger black female steps from the pack and don't budge. She nervously presses her wet muzzle into your palm. Sniffs, nudges, then licks your hand. Her tail begins to wag happily. Seems we made a few friends. So this is where you recruit wolves and stuff like that. And when you actually have a town, you can recruit them from there. Instead of having to go out to places like this, as long as there's nothing blocking the path. I have 23 wolves. That is the most adorable wolf picture, isn't it? Come on, just look at it. It's so adorable. I'm going insane. I'm just tired. But yeah, there's probably many of you who have never played this game before, which is, I will say, sad. Because you know what? I love this game. Oh, level one nature shrine. Because I am a nature wizard, I can summon sprites. Slowly, you touch the shrine with both hands as energy passes through your skin, enveloping you, sensing, sensing your familiarity with nature magic. It passes on to, it passes on the knowledge of the, of this mystical place, teaching you summon spirit sprite spell. Summon sprite spell. Oh, here's another one. You pause to wash off some of the grime collected during your hike. Quickly you realize you will never be properly cleaned until you return to the Elven Court. A hot bath is what you need, but you wash your face and hands, and you're about to take a bath when you notice some tiny fairies facing hi tiny, tiny faces hiding in the bushes at the edge of the pool. Hey you, come out there, come out of there. Even before you see them, you recognize the giggle of a sprite. What are you doing? Watching? Yeah, we were wondering if you were two elves in one, s said another. Uh, you're so tall? I bet you got another person in there. Under your pretty clothes. You know from experience, if given the freedom, a sprite will talk all day, so you interrupt. No, it's just me. My name is Elwyn. I'm a druid of the Elwyn Court, and I seem to be lost. Maybe you can help. You're a druid? You don't look like a druid. No, he looks like a funny, tall, singing minstrel man. A tall, skinny, colorful tree, yes. What kind of tree is he? You raise your hands again, sighing because even sprites are joking about your size. Can you help me? You ask. Think about it. If you join me, you can make jokes about me all day long. The sprites fly in circles over the pool, giggling and hooting with pleasure. And one of them waves at you. Sounds like fun. Follow us to our home. We want to tell the others, too. Oh god, we need more of them? <clears throat> I mean, I'm gonna take all of the fairies I can get. Uh, not fairy sprites. I'm probably insulting some fairies out there by saying that. So yeah, there's a lot of things to this game, and I really like this game. I'm gonna go for probably a little bit longer. Ever since you washed up on shore, Shero has been somber and quiet. I've been more concerned with getting us to safety than anything else, but I can no longer look upon her word expression. Her face simply wasn't meant to hold lines of sorrow. 
So this morning I scrounged up some apples, and at noon we stopped to rest near a trickling stream. Have a seat, milady, I say, unfurling my purple cloak <clears throat> and placing it on the damp ground. It, it was already ruined. What does it matter if it got a little dirty? Shara nodded and sat. She watched the clear, the clear water flow around a glistening stone. Meanwhile, I dug the apple from my the apples from my pouch and proceeded to juggle them. Now, my friend Abby, three of these apples are like the, are likely the juiciest, sweetest morsels you'll ever you've ever tasted. I said. And what about the fourth? She asked, reluctantly playing the, my game. Why, that one is magical. Although just as tasty as the others, she who bites it will instantly fall in love with the first person she sees. The corner of Shira's mouth turned slightly upward. She said, Then perhaps I shouldn't eat. I wouldn't want to take the risk of falling in love with the wrong person, would I? Oh no, you must eat. Besides, I happen to know that the type of magical apple doesn't work if the imbiber already loves another. I caught each apple behind my back with a flourish, and then I presented one to share. She took it and without a hesitation bit into the red fruit. Some juicy some juice collected on her full lips. Now I've never had reason to want to be an apple before. But the day but that day I would have given my legs to be one. Don't you want to uh, don't you want to know which apple I gave you? No. It matters not which I ate. That's a great story. What's in this? Oh god. It was a trap. Oh god, this is a pretty bad trap, honestly. Because with fly, you can like basically cross the entire board. So let's have you go over there. Wolves. Protect me, wolves! And then I'll summon more wolves. Wolves are amazing. Oh god, he gets another thing because his morale is good. Yep, my wolves died, I figured. Yeah, like, the thing with this game is you're, all your units are going to die at some point. Because it's just not easy to keep them. But yeah, like, I, 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 <clears throat> I really enjoy this game. And I do hope to play it more. Hmm. How much health do they have? Um, they have 10 health each. I would not be able to kill them all, but my wolves probably could. Or stand a better chance of at least. <clears throat> nice. Kill them. Yeah, like, if you can, sacrificing, like, stuff like units that you don't that you can summon is the best way of doing it because then you get to keep more of your units. Potion of Immortality and Vial of Acid. I feel like sometimes when I'm playing this game it lags a bit. Um, 
Yeah, I really enjoyed this game, so I'm gonna play a little bit longer. Where did you come out of? Well, I'm gonna summon my wolves. <clears throat> Attack my wolves. Back attacks give you, like, bonuses against them. Which makes getting, like, a lot more units very useful. And when you flank, of course. Regular wolves get the um, whole thing of, like, when they attack, they do a double attack. Which is really cool. Summon ones don't have that, sadly. <clears throat> but they do have some just as equally cool stuff. Uh, fuse... Dozens, oh god. So we'll take on you guys. Because the way the game runs is like, a few is a small amount. It, it's like a, it's like in real life with saying like, how, like a rough estimate of how many stuff. What does this do? A hero who drinks a potion of immortality doesn't come back, he will instantly return to life. Potion can be used before a battle, and only wears off when the hero dies. It resurrects the hero once. That's cool. But yeah, let's summon my wolves. <clears throat> really? My guys didn't even get the, the chance to attack. And fucking harpies. Harpies are one of the most annoying things to fight because they just fly forward and then fly back. Yeah, so I might as well not even attack with those guys. Kill that, please. You killed one of them. I'm gonna lose all my wolves to this small fight. How'd you quit it? Why are they not attacking me? I mean, I had every chance to do that. <clears throat> Cause I just can keep summoning more wolves if I want to. What was... Oh really? Just out of range of two- of one, one attack? Kill him. Okay, I'll kill him. Kabong! There's another old reference. I wonder how many people will get. Okay. Well, here's where I'm gonna leave this off, I guess, because at this point I don't have, like, I've been going for a little while and I'm at the point in the game where it's like I need to get up units if I'm going to continue going on. So, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know if you want to see me play more of this game down in the comments below, and I hope you all have an amazing day. I like this throwback back to an old game I love, though.